So uh, we were working on an example, this example that I stole from uh, homework problem 11, and we had gotten our general solution. Um, so we got these two linearly independent solutions, x1 and x2, and then we wrote our general solution in two different ways, um, just grouping the terms in different ways. And you know, you just use whichever grouping uh, is most convenient for you for whatever you're doing. So here we're grouping things based on what has a C1 and what has a C2 in front of it. Here we're grouping things based on uh, what's multiplied by this vector and what's multiplied by that vector. There's actually a third grouping that I neglected to mention, and it's the one that we that is going to be useful for us in this video. That's to group things based on what's multiplied by cosine 2t and what's multiplied by sine 2t. So write, write your thing here, c1 green plus c2 blue, collect uh, and group terms in such a way that it's a bunch of stuff times cosine 2t plus a bunch of stuff times sine 2t. Now, uh, there's going to be an overall factor of e to the minus t on everything, right? There's just an overall e to the minus t on everything. So I kind of want to get that out of my way for the moment, and just I'm just going to write it in the very front here, and then put some giant brackets there. So everything's multiplied by e to the minus t. And then after that, what's in front of cosine 2t? OK, well, I, what I'm seeing is um, there's stuff that comes from the green part, c1, x1, and there's stuff that comes from the blue part, c2, x2. From the green part, I've got e to the minus t, c1, cosine 2t, this vector. So negative 4, negative 2. And then from the blue part, I'm seeing e to the negative t, c2. Oh, I lost the c1. c1. From the blue part, I've got c2, e to the negative t, um, and then this vector, cosine 2t. So c2, I've already written the e to the negative 2t, I've already written the cosine 2t. And then there's this vector. And then for this one, for this one, I've actually written it incorrectly here, and I was going to fill it in quickly, but just doing it a little bit carefully, I've got the e to the minus t, sine 2t, and then from the green portion, I have a c1, that's good, and then which part has a sine 2t on it? Negative 2, 0 but there's a minus sign there. So that becomes a plus sign. All right, so you can see I'm, I'm basically just skipping a lot of algebra steps trying to collect terms in my head. Um, it's very easy to make mistakes doing this, so don't be surprised if it takes a few tries. Um, and then, let's see, what do I have with C2? E to the minus T, C2, sine 2T, and then let me go look for that term here c2, e to the minus t, sine 2t, 4, negative 2. All right. All right, there we have it. Um, let, me, let me clean up how I'm writing this a little bit. All right, I think that looks a little better. So what we've got here is... Uh, let's okay. Let's ignore the e to the minus t part first. Um, so just e to the minus t multiplied by everything. But focus on what's inside. It's uh, cosine two t times one vector plus sine two t times another vector, and all the t, all the time dependence is in is in the cosine two t and the sine two t. These are constant vectors. So let me say that again. Uh, cosine 2t times some constant fixed vector plus sine 2t times some constant fixed vector. What does that look like in the phase plane? What does that trajectory look like? So I think we could use a, a sort of side investigation right now of just that general question of like what does cosine 2t vector plus sine 2t vector look like uh, just in general. And then we can come back and then think about, okay, well, if you have the particular vectors that are being formed here, then what would that look like? 
So gen let's start with a general question. The general question, what does it look like when you do this? Say you have two vectors, A and B, in the face plane. So maybe this is A, and then B is just some other random vector. Um, and these are fixed vectors, not dependent on time or anything like that, but then you create this time-dependent function like this, vector-valued function. That'll trace out some curve in the face plane. What will that curve look like? So think about, uh, so one, one easy way to get started at least is think about time, different times. You know, plug in specific times, like time equals, uh, okay, let's make this even easier actually. How about I even make the angular frequency one? What does this look like in the face plane? So plug in different times. Uh, now it's easy to find good times to plug in that make certain things zero or one. So at time zero, what do you get? When t equals zero, this is coefficient is one and this is zero, right? So you're here at t equals zero. So it looks like your trajectory starts at where this vector is. Okay, let's play time forward a little bit. Um, what's the next reasonable time that we can think about? How about pi over two? When time is pi over two, so this was time equals zero, then when time is pi over two, um, this is zero and that's one, right? So then we're over here. So somehow we moved from here to there. By what curve? Did we do this, maybe? Wiggle around and go there. Did we do this? whoop do do like that? Um, who knows, but we ended up here at t equals pi over two. All right, uh, what about t equals pi? Then this is uh, negative one and that one is zero, so we end up at negative a. So like there, the negative of this vector. So we go from here to there to there, and then when time is three pi over two, we'll get end up at negative b. So we'll end up there. So we'll go from here to there to there to there. Actually, we're gonna follow uh, an ellipse as we do this. Uh, if I can actually make an ellipse that has that shape. So how do I know that that's, that's what's going on, that we're following the elliptical path around when we do this? I know that because I'm familiar with the situation where these two vectors are the standard basis vectors. So if your A and B happen to be, let me replace this picture by, by one where A and B happen to be like this, let's say this is A, it's just the vector one zero, and then let's say B is the vector zero one, then what am I looking at? If I just mul uh, just do this, cosine t one zero plus sine t zero one, that's just cosine t sine t, right? And you've plotted this parametrically before. It's a circle, it starts here, then it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here. It's a circle traveling this way. That's like from the definition of cosine and sine, right? Co cosine means the horizontal coordinate of the point on the unit circle whose uh, angle is t radians off of the x-axis, right? And then sine t is the y-coordinate of, of that thing. So it all starts with kind of the situation where a and b are standard basis vectors. If you now transform a and b to not necessarily standard basis vectors, so maybe you make a like this and b like that, then you're still doing the same thing, kind of, but it's just warped or distorted. And you're still traveling in that same direction um, because you're traveling from a to b to negative a to negative b. Uh, at least that's how I, th I think about it. Um, if, so it could be that you're actually going the other way. If you're in this kind of situation where you're maybe this is actually B and that's A there, then you're still going from A to B to negative A to negative B. But that would then be the other direction. 
uh, clockwise, I guess. So counterclockwise or clockwise, you can get either depending on sort of how A and B are oriented in space with respect to each other. But uh, let's say you start, no matter what, you start at A, then pi over 2 radians later, you're at B. And then pi over 2 radians later, you're at negative A. And then pi over 2 radians later, you're at negative B. And then uh, back to A. Okay, so now let's start adding in some complication. So let's say I multiply by 2 here. Let me, let me get this clutter out of the way here. Yeah, let's say I multiply by 2. Cosine 2t, sine 2t. What, what effect does that have? It doesn't change the picture of the trajectory. The picture of the trajectory looks the same, but I'm just running uh, twice as fast, right? When I do this, I'm just changing the angular frequency. So think of it this way. Uh, per unit time, every time I increase t by 1, uh, I'm actually increasing the radians, the phase, the angle that's being plugged into the cosine and sine, by twice that amount, by 2. So per unit time, I actually go 2 radians, 2 radians per second. So I travel 2 radians around this uh, ellipse, which is a distorted circle. I travel 2 radians per second. So I mean, there is a period to this, right? Like, how, how long does it take to go from, uh, from A all the way around the ellipse back to A? Even though the ellipse is distorted, going all the way around and coming back is going to take 2 pi radians. It's just a stretched and squashed version of a circle. So 2 pi radians to go all the way around. How long does it take to, to run 2 pi radians? Well, however long it, however much time you need to add to t to make 2t increase by a value of 2 pi. So pi. It would take pi, in this setup, it would take pi units of time to traverse 2 pi radians and go all the way around the ellipse. Okay, so now you're seeing what happens when you put this here. You just run around the ellipse faster or slower. So this is your, your frequency, uh, it affects your period, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, but what situation are we in? This is still a little bit complicated. So when I talk about the vectors a and b, this here is like the vector a, some fixed vector, and this is like the vector b, right? And we're okay with thinking now about cosine 2t a, sine 2t b, but we also have this e to the minus t sitting in front. There's also this e to the minus t sitting in front. So let's go here. What happens now when I throw in e to the minus t in front of everything, scale everything by e to the minus t? Well, when the same picture plays out as the yellow picture, except also at the same time, everything is getting scaled down towards the origin. So at time zero, you really are here because at time zero, this scale factor is one. But as you increase time, the scale factor decays, right? And wherever you were, you get closer to the origin. Wherever you would have been, you get closer, closer to the origin, decaying down towards the origin. So you decay in kind of an elliptical spiral. You see? Like that. So you're forever spiraling around the origin, but this exponential decay is pretty quick, so you, uh, you lose visibility of the spiral pretty quickly. But if you keep zooming in on here, you will see uh, more and more spirals in, in an elliptical shape. So this spiraling in situation, we're getting this because our eigenvalue was, was negative. That's why we're getting this. Uh, sorry, the real part of our eigenvalue was negative. So because it's e to the minus t. If it were e to the t or e to the 7t or something, then it would be spiraling out, right? So say it were e to the 2t instead of e to the t, then I would say, yeah, we're going around, but we're also uh, exploding exponentially as we do it. So it would be the yellow circle, but at each time it's blown out further and further from the origin. Okay, but we, we here are in this situation. So those two are referred to as uh, stable spirals and unstable spirals when you have 
uh, exponential growth in front here. So this is like a stable spiral. You're spiraling in towards the origin. If you look towards the past, then you see, as you run time backwards, you would see sort of the unstable spiral picture, but with the arrows flipped around. Because as you run time backwards, this is actually growing. Now, does that actually help us with a phase diagram for this? Yeah, it really does. Um, it, it helps us because uh, all this shows the full picture, except the vectors A and B have not been specified. So you can just imagine moving these vectors A and B into the correct position, and then the ellipse, the yellow ellipse, will get stretched and distorted into the correspondingly correct position and then throw on your exponential growth or decay and then you'll get a spiraling in or out. Um, I think that basically explains the full picture. If you actually want specific vectors for what I'm calling A and B here, if you want specific vectors then you need to know what are C1 and C2, right? You need initial conditions. 